Happy Victory Monday, everyone, and happy holidays as well. Welcome to this edition of the Coach McVeigh Show presented by Microsoft Surface. I'm JB Long to Marco Farr and Sean McVeigh. I uh, hope you had a great Christmas. Hope the Rams win was a big part of it. Sean McVeigh, a uh, see you Wednesday for the Los Angeles Rams. Was that Tyler Higby initiated or Sean McVeigh? That, that was, I, I kind of whispered that, but uh, I think he would have had the swag to be able to kind of figure that out on his own. And, and it certainly is, uh, you know, a well-deserved victory. Uh, so we'll give them off on Monday, Tuesday being their day off, and then get back in and uh, get ready to roll for another good week on Wednesday. But uh, it was great to be able to see those guys do I their thing. I love that. I'd like to start begging guys. Hey. See you Wednesday. Say you Wednesday. Say it loud. Say it loud. Say you Wednesday. Thank you, Coach. Yes, sir. Right. It is, it, you know, it's those have uh, not been as frequent as uh, yeah. as we're accustomed to, so you don't take them for granted. So you've heard this before. Uh, when you take the field on Sunday, the hay's in the barn. It's all up to the guys now. Did you have a good feeling that your guys had a good week of practice that something like this could happen? You know, I, th- I think the, the way the guys have just steadily approached the last, you know, few weeks, really over the last month, I've just been so impressed with, you know, how consistent, how steady, how resilient they've been. Obviously, it was a little bit different in terms of the amount of prep that we could physically do based on getting back late from a Monday night game in Green Bay. And so, um, you know, they did a great job with the things that they could control. But to say that I saw that coming, um, you know, what a great job by them. You know, they, they got it done. Uh, there was just so many great reflections of complimentary football on display yesterday, DeMarco. And um, to see those guys have that kind of joy, being able to go play because of those moments that they earned, that's what makes it all worth it. Let me go back to that. Last week started at what? Wheels down 4 a.m. Yeah. Tuesday morning, right? Yes. Coming back from Green Bay? Yeah. Amazing. You know, and then they you, you bring them in um, on Wednesday for really just quick meetings, get them out of there. Thursday you really have a walkthrough and then Friday was the only real day that we practiced this past week and so um, maybe we should just practice once a week uh, you know with with Baker uh, you know doing his thing because the times that he's practiced just once a week before uh, each of these games he's 2-0 so uh, no but it's it's one of those deals that you just kind of have to adjust and adapt but the intentionality that the guys have had in regards to some of the mental work that needs to take place with the walkthroughs and stuff I thought that they did look fresh um, I thought we looked faster, more physical, and, and that was a good thing. And, and I think we want to be smart about how we manage the last two weeks to try to see that reflected in games against the Chargers and Seahawks. That's kind of our closing thought, wasn't it, last night when we signed off. Say what you will about what the 2020 Rams did or didn't do. They were professionals until the end. Yes. And you've made that met common in different ways, uh, different ways it's manifested itself. But I think we can say that definitively now. These are pros, pros. They are. And... It says so much. I mean, just because you look at it and the guys that have been here, especially accustomed to always having something to play for, you know, in the five years prior, there's only been one game that we've had that didn't have playoff, um, you know, you know, a a possibility of going to the playoffs and and being able to extend your season. And that was against Arizona in 2019. Um, But that represented a chance to be able to go out the Coliseum the right way, Mm -hmm. get to nine and seven. Um, But it just says so much, like you mentioned. And and that's really when you learn about people, you know, and and really like I've kind of consistently said throughout the course of these meetings that we have, um, you're forced to learn a lot about yourself. And some of it is good. And then some of it, you have to be honest and say, yeah, maybe there are some insecurities that you didn't realize you had that this is exposed that will help you be stronger and be a better leader and um, you know be more resilient as you move forward. But until you go through those types of things, there is nothing that you can do to really prepare yourself um, for those moments other than experience it, handle it the right way, be honest with yourself. And you know the players, the way they've handled it, JB, I know it's a long-winded answer, but the inspiration that they've given me has been something that you know keeps you going and keeps you grinding for them. And then days like yesterday are where you're just so happy for them because they've earned those. A 50 burger yeah. with cheese. Yeah, Gotta go. love it. Um, Cam Akers running the football. We talked about this and nothing, taking nothing away from Baker Mayfield. It looks like he's really enjoying playing football. But when you're running the football like that, it's kind of easier to play quarterback behind that. No question. And, and really, everybody's job gets easier because you can really dictate the terms. It makes it so much easier for you to be able to present different things offensively to keep people a little bit more off balance. And everything is at your disposal. But um, I thought the you know the physicality that our guys played with up front, I thought Cam's ability to be able to level runs off, see where the ball was supposed to be able to get. Even in the past game, I thought he was outstanding when Baker got through some progressions. The third down and three where he gets 18 yards was a big check down where he ends up creating and looked explosive he was engaged did a good job playing without the ball and 
I'm really happy for Cam. He, he was a stud yesterday. As that trade deadline was approaching, we kind of stayed away from that personal matter. You, you categorized it as such, and we respect that totally. How would you summarize the past few months now that they've gone by? Not specific to where your relationship is with Cam, but like what are some of those learning points, those takeaways, big picture with him, with you, with this organization? I think if you can be honest about having, you know, some setbacks, I know the strongest relationships that I have are where you can be, you know, totally honest, whether that be telling people the things they need to hear or you admitting to your faults in terms of how you would handle it differently. And I think once we got a chance to sit down, have an honest conversation with one another, I acknowledge you know my part in where I think I could have been better and more helpful in facilitating you know the responses that we were looking for in a lot of those instances that that led to you know him taking a little bit of a leave but his ability to handle it the right way I think says a lot about the human being and he's a resilient guy he's just come back he's gone to work and you can see the ability it's always been there he's such a talented player um, but you're starting to see a guy that's continuing to mature not only as a football player but as a man and um, and it's being reflected in a really positive way with what he's doing on the football field and um, you know you give him all the credit yeah those two plays when he caught the ball out of the backfield I think two plays 30 yards yeah banging I mean spinning off guys I mean yes. that's what we thought Cam Akers that's the guy we thought he was going to look like I think so and I think a lot of it too is about just getting opportunities and, and you really look at it, it, it football is the greatest team sport there is when guys are being able to get some of these things started and then you can see when he's getting to the second and the third level of defense clean that's when you can see the slash run and take place that's when you can really get enough momentum to be able to work edges you're able to get into the rhythm of the game and I thought that was reflective you know of you know any back and especially a back like him he's a rhythm runner and you get into the flow of the game and you're able to be efficient and then you can do a couple different things with some of the schemes that you're presenting and he brings it to life and and that was definitely on display yesterday good defense too really good defense really good defense That's excellent defense whether it's finding cam on the check down there was one to malcolm that i'm not even sure how baker saw him I know. but that was something that you talked about last week i know we've been talking about hitting the layups uh, as baker has become a ram how much do you think he progressed in that area, uh, getting from one to two to three, like you talked about last I, I week? I thought really well. I mean, for him to go 24 for 28, and you talk to him right after the game, and he can remember the exact incompletions, he's got one of those deals where he can remember every single play, and he's got a great ability to be able to communicate during the course of a game with what he's seeing. But I thought he played really fast. You mentioned it. And, you know, in a lot of instances, if it is a pure progression or an across the board, you know, he was able to eliminate, and, and that one third down and three, you know, he's getting to – uh, to Cam Akers, who's his fifth option on that one. Mm -hmm. And to be able to exhaust his progressions, to get through, to play fast, to deliver the ball with accuracy and play within himself, um, just an outstanding job. You know, the third down where they bring the zero and he ends up hitting Higby for the touchdown. There was just so many good examples. And I also thought a lot of, you know, credit goes to Baker for how we ran it because of the management of the run game, being mm -hmm. able to get in and out. Because it's not like you're just saying, all right, a lot of those are where you might be calling two plays or getting in and out of different looks based on what they presented. Because they did roll decks a lot of different things defensively. But, um, you know, his management of the game and his maturation, um, you know, was definitely – um, illustrated yesterday, JB, and he played great. And one of those incompletions was intentional. He threw that off the crossbar just because, right? He did, yeah. <laughs> he, he sure did. He threw that thing off the crossbar just to see if he could ricochet it back to himself. Is that a live ball? No, it's not. Oh, thank God. Okay, we had that discussion. Uh, but, I mean, look, um, shout out to the Bigs. When your quarterback isn't sacked and only touched once, you better be pretty good in the yes. pocket. And, yeah. and that is a real credit of – you're able to dictate the terms and you're not necessarily forced to be in a lot of those known passing downs where, you know, you've got to allow some routes to be able to develop, to be able to get past the sticks. And, um, you know, even on the first drive of the game where he ended up taking Higby in the flat to allow Matt Gay to be able to get that long field goal, that was a good play because that was the only play we could make right there. And that was kind of the intent where you're not really thinking conversion as much as let's get a few more yards to get our guy in, uh, you know, good range where he can easily knock it through from 55. I'll take your cue there. What a week. 55 at Lambeau in sub-freezing temps. I know. Again, yesterday at SoFi, 30 and 53 as well. I mean, this is a contract season for Matt Gay, but I'm sure I think I speak for all of us. Love to see him in horns for many years to come. Yeah, right? no doubt. I mean, he's done a great job. You don't ever take for granted. I mean, even when I was first here, um, you know, with what a great – great kicker Greg Zerline's been we've been really fortunate and blessed that you know since we've gotten Matt Gay here you know he's really stabilized that position over the last few years and, and he's a great guy to be around as well I love that decision as a head coach you're 55 56 out I mean how do you know when your place kicker trots out 
or you let's know, go ahead and kick it, Matt, go get go yeah, get it. Yeah. Those guys do a good job of communicating before the game on warm-ups based on how the ball's flying, you know, going in you know, both directions. And um, SoFi has always been a good place for, for Matt to be able to have nice, comfortable range where he doesn't have to overstride, you know, for any of those longer kicks. And, you know, the weather very rarely affects, you know, any mm-hmm. of the circumstances like what we had seen on uh, Monday. I know how much you value early down efficiency. I, I took a look at your first downs up to the point where it became 41-6. I had you at nearly five yards per game, like yeah. not astronomical, but three touchdowns on first down. Any real negative plays other than that one botched snap? No, there really wasn't. And and that was, you know, there was a couple, you know, zero gains as the game progressed, but there wasn't any of those negatives. You know, you're able to stay relatively clean in regards to some of the penalties, JB. And then, you know, when you're able to run the football efficiently and then when your quarterback goes 24 for 28, you're keeping the ball in play. And mm-hmm. Um, those are big deals for us, and and um, you know that that was what it felt like. You know, it was a great clean operation by those guys, and you know to score on all your possessions against a great defense. That's the one thing too is like that's a very special defense, and tremendous respect for E and those guys, and and how well coordinated it was, and and the caliber of players that they had, and that's where I think our guys you know can draw a lot of confidence as they you know finish this thing up the right way these last couple of weeks where. You can hopefully build on it and play good, clean, you know, offensive football and give yourself a chance to get those outcomes we're hunting up. 2-2 two, two and, and Powell, can we bring back the old Smurfs, you know? Yeah. That 2-2 two, two speed out, man, I don't know that many guys that can stay in front of that guy when he's that quick. No question. No, he, he did a great job, and I thought he had two of those catches where it's good aggressive hands, um, you know, one on the right, one on the left, and I thought it was great location by Baker, but those are the kind of things where you know Tutu can do a lot of different things, but to be able to show that part of his game that he's capable of, sharp, good underneath routes, even contested against an excellent player like Sertan uh, on the second offensive snap of the game, those are those are good, positive football plays that you can get a, you know, a lot of confidence from if you're a player and, and you continue to build on that. Sean, is there a good example of uh, something that Baker's doing that maybe we can't pick up on or see? That's impacting winning through three weeks here. I mean, I just think his energy. I, I don't think it's by mistake the way that the guys played. You know, you know, there was just an energy, and you know, I, I think he's one of those guys that he exudes a great way about himself with the leadership, the charisma, the presence, and um, you know, it's one of those deals where there was a, that, that energy you could feel it. You know, and, and as a quarterback, you know, because of your innately thrust into a leadership role with communicating the plays and. Just watch the way that he even picks up his teammates, how excited he gets. You know, he's carrying out a fake and a run gets sprung out. And just, you know, those kind of things, you feel that. And you can't fake it, and that's who he is. And, um, you know, I, I, I tell our guys all the time, I see better than I hear. And I see a team that is playing with a lot of energy. And, and I saw, uh, you know, an offensive unit that played with a lot of energy and a lot of charisma and swag yesterday. And I think that was a reflection of, you know, the total unit. But I think Baker's definitely had a good influence on that. And tell the Pee Wee players, do what he does, except for the headbutting there you go yeah that's right have that i just but you can tell i mean maybe the pressure's off it might be yeah yeah, and i think you would know i I think he's out there what i've been so impressed with too is um you know like i've i've talked a lot about just how impressed i've been with our players ability to manage you know a tough year but you think about some of the things that he's gone through and how unfazed he is where there's a supreme confidence and security in himself to just go out there and cut it loose. I certainly have felt that, um, you know, and I thought yesterday was definitely, you know, that was something you could truly feel. And I I think that, uh, you know, I expect him to play well these next couple weeks, uh, you know, in addition to uh, what he did yesterday. He's rejuvenated the tight end position. We were watching Tyler Higby run out of the tunnel yesterday, and DeMarco and I both stop and look at each other. We're like, (laughs) that's as fast and as healthy as we've seen him move in some time, and it translated into his best game of the year, knowing how much he's given of himself to this franchise for seven years now. What does it mean to say confidently he's the greatest, most accomplished tight end in Rams history? It's earned, you know, and and he's been so steady. I mean, you look at just, you know, I mean, football, these years are like dog years, right? I mean, so being in the sixth year, he's been one of the few guys that's been there every single year, the consistency, the production, the way that he goes about his business, and then what he gives for his teammates every single snap, especially with what that tight end position entails. You're playing without the ball, you're playing on the line of scrimmage, sometimes you're detached from the core, you're in pass protection, you're in the run game blocking surface. Oh, and then by the way, we're going to ask you to be a huge contributor in the pass game, not exclusive to making big time third down catches 
versus a zero blitz. To see him get in the end zone, uh, you know, a few times these last couple weeks has been awesome. But he's a he's a special guy. I love Tyler Higby. He's one of those things that that he embodies what's right about you know what has been right about the Rams for the last handful of years. That's like almost the special forces unit. Not only do you have to do that, you have to do it all good and and well and great. That's exactly in right. Some respects. Bryson Hopkins. Man, it was, showing up making plays. Yeah. yeah, and and again another guy. You know, three big catches, big explosives, but also he played well without the ball. Demarco, you know, one of those things where we were able to get he and Higby on the field together, and you can do some different things to to try to present you know some different looks you know to a defense. And in a lot of instances, those were things that ended up being really efficient and effective for us. And uh, really happy for Bryson. He did a great job yesterday. Both those guys did. Whatever this one was that got Higby open, that was nasty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I would be mad at you. That was the <laughs> we all know uh, Bobby Wagner is going to go into the Hall of Fame as a Seahawk, but he's authoring a pretty special chapter here in Los Angeles. He really is, you know, and, and to be able to make that play early on in the game, um, you know, after Jacoby had gotten the interception, we were able to capitalize on that to make it 10 nothing, and then to be able to get that, you know, quick interception again, I thought, you know, once you get to 17 nothing, you know, the momentum is really in your favor. We never mm-hmm. relinquished it, but Bobby has been so steady, so consistent. You can't say enough about him, and um, you know, it has been it's been impressive. I know that sack must have felt good. Yes, because you had practiced against that guy forever, and now you get to sack him. That- I'd be interested if you asked him what did he like more, the sack or the uh, the pick on him. It had to be the sack. I get to touch you. I get. To- <laughs> you you got to ask him. <laughs> uh, another one you mentioned, uh, Kobe Durant. Uh, let me see where where are his stats. I know I jotted them down. Thirteen career targets so far as a rookie. Not even 200 career snaps. Three interceptions, leads the Rams, leads the NFL in interception return yardage. How about that? I mean, how's that for an early splash? I, you know, a guy that is just, he just finds a way to be where he's supposed to be. You know, there, there are certain people, you know, that I've been around in this game that they just have a knack for making plays, uh, being in the right spot at the right time, and, and certainly he is, uh, he's done that with the limited amount of snaps. I didn't realize it was that kind of production for that limited uh, amount of snaps, and he is uh he's a he's a great kid to be around. He's got a nice look in his eye. Um, you know, he's really grateful, you know, to be here and, and he's a guy too that's continuing to expand, you know, what he can do because his skill set is so impressive. You know, but you look at his background, you know, where he was exclusively just kind of an outside corner where he's playing bump man and for him to be able to pick up the nuances of playing inside, having the ability to play outside, the future's really bright for this guy. And that's it, right? Because part of it is his own injury history and part of it is Troy Hills having a great year in front totally. of him in the slot. So uh, some doors had to open for him, and he had to be right to take advantage of opportunities like we saw going back to Atlanta. That's exactly right. It's been such a unique year. You know, you almost forget that he had had, you know, the injury that leaves him unavailable, and, and you know, there's just been so many moving parts. But to his credit, when his opportunities have been there, he has certainly answered the bell, and, and he's done it in a big way. I hope he's soaking it all up with Troy Hill and Jalen Ramsey. He who definitely played is. every snap again. Have to put that out there. Yeah. He's a really curious guy. You know, I was even talking with him the other day, um, you know, in the middle of practice where he was even asking about, you know, you know, the, the trajectory of coaches and how hard was it to get, you know, to where I was, you know, where I'm at, you know, based on, you know, just coaching compared to playing. And he's just very interested, you know, and um, interested people are interesting, they say. And, uh, you know, he's a, he's a great guy to be around. Um, he's got a great, you know, intellectual curiosity about himself, and he is a baller with great athleticism and traits that I think's going to serve him well for a really, uh, for a really, really bright future. I'm not sure that if Larell Murchison walked by in the hallway, I would recognize right? him yet. It's unbelievable. Um, but I think it's a fascinating case study in terms of scouting, pro personnel. I'm guessing Coach Henny had an eval on him coming out of the draft he in did. 2020, and then he becomes available, and your pro personnel people give a thumbs up, and off you go. That's right. And in, in a lot of instances, as you know, JB, you know, sometimes it's like, well, we are so down, so we this guy comes available on the waiver wire. Let's put in a claim for him, and um, and for him to come in and do what he did, you know, real kudos to him. Um, a couple sacks, you know, should have had him active last week then. <laughs> <laughs> right, no doubt. Put him on the Baker plan. Wow. That's right. Two sacks, two tackles for loss. I thought he had a hat trick. I thought he got a piece I of the he one got that three. he fed to they Hoyt. They might review it and they, give they, it to they, him. They took I it hope away. so. But in 16 plays. Yeah. Wow. Did you ever do that? No. I don't think anybody's done that. Just let Merch eat, man. we got to get him out there for more snaps. Speaking of review, first challenge flag of the season. 
yesterday for you yeah kind of successful yeah it kind of i mean you know what it was like one of those like want 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 you know it really i mean you didn't lose the challenge but you didn't win it i so thought it was, it was like, a fumble i still think it was a fumble me too you know i i thought it was moving i guess they had a vantage point that maybe we couldn't see where his knee was down before the ball was moving but i think because of where it was situated on the helmet it, it almost mm. kind of gave you a false mm. in, interpretation but hey i don't make those rules i just uh you know throw the flag out there and I still think we should have. Let me translate that. Sean McVay thinks the officiating has been so good this year that not until week 16 did he have to drop his Outstanding way of putting it. There you go. I love it. Um, wow. Was there anything under the radar, underrated, we didn't see yesterday, a play that you liked as part of a quote-unquote perfect game, aside from the touchdowns and the takeaways that maybe tells the story of yesterday's victory? I think yesterday was a perfect example of just, you know, the compounding confidence that can happen when guys go about things the right way. And then the complimentary football on display, you know, where you talk about getting turnovers in short fields and turning those into touchdowns. And so... Um, you know, to me, I, I think what you saw yesterday was a, is a great culmination of guys playing in all three phases together and, and what, you know, what makes football the greatest team sport that there is. And, um, you know, and I think that's a positive. I don't know that there was anything under the radar except for just, you know, that was a great illustration and an example of a lot of guys continuing to do things right, not exclusive to just the past week, but really over the course of the last month. I do think that there was a little bit of a flip, you know, even though we came up short against Seattle, there's just been a good focused energy and concentration where the level of ball has been, you know, just better in my opinion. And want to see that reflected with the last couple weeks. But, but yesterday was a, a great way to be able to celebrate Christmas with those guys. Um, and to just see the joy and feel it, you know, when you look at even when Dakobe late in the game and the game's already out of hand, seeing how excited guys get for one another's success that's what makes it special. That's what makes uh, that group of guys special. And I'll forever cherish a lot of these things in what has been a really challenging year. But, you know, those moments, um, you know, are things that you can really look back on fondly because of what it says about the totality of, of, you know, the character in that locker room based on where we're at in this point in the season, how we've gotten here, and how that hasn't affected their ability to continue to go out and do what they've done. That's culture to me. Yeah. I mean, championship culture is hoisting the Lombardi. I get it. Mm. But in the midst of this season, to have moments like those, that to me is culture that can carry forward. I agree. And, and that's what you take a lot of pride in and just being a small part of it. But it's about the character of the human beings. And, you know, culture is how you do things consistently day in and day out, not, not exclusive to just the results. Now, usually when you hear good cultures, like you mentioned, it's usually accompanied with getting those types of results. But I do think, like you mentioned, you look at everything that's gone on and to see that type of performance in spite of, you know, whatever the outside in narrative is and how the guys have just gone about their business. You're proud to be associated with Did it. Did you say you're a small part of that? Yeah, you're a part of it. You know, oh, you, you are okay. a part of it. I kind of yeah. think you're kind of leading it, but that's me. That's I why I didn't that. get what was happening after the game because you guys were winning with class. I mean, there was, it's competitive, but right. I mean, to throw punches, that's a frustrated football team. I mean, what's your coaching point on how to handle those situations? I think you, you know, I think you want to understand exactly what occurred. You try to avoid those things at all costs, and and you could see guys got in there quickly. Um, you know, when I, I don't know exactly what led to Randy actually throwing a punch at O'Day. I do know that we got the letter from the league where they are going to suspend both players for a game as a result of that. Now we'll appeal it. Um, I think you know I want to get a chance to really you know talk to O'Day. I think you always make the best decisions when you understand the perspective, and and then you try to you know put yourself in the other person's shoes. And, and be empathetic in that you know regards with how you would want to handle it but hopefully we'll get that thing uh, knocked back out and, and be able to get him back out there but if not then you know we'll figure out how to move forward accordingly and try to limit those things obviously if you do have to plug a guard in I know Chandler Brewer is on his way back deep in this calendar year Zachary Thomas also claimed off uh, the Chicago Bears practice sure. squad is are those guys that might, we might see they're definite candidates um, you know I think you know Brewer with what he did and, and the way that he played with his opportunities man it would be awesome to get him a chance to see if he could come back and, and contribute for us these last couple weeks. I know he's been working his tail off to be able to do that. His 21-day 21 clock, 21 day clock will start this week, and um, if he's feeling good, then we'll probably try to activate him. Hmm. I don't even need to talk about the Chargers, do you? Well, we can. No, I'm good. got him here. No, I'm good. <laughs> he wants to go celebrate Christmas Absolutely. with his family, and go. so do we. Sounded uh, good to you? Yeah, he was good. Yeah, good to you. All right, yeah, there you go. Awesome. <laughs> and to the Rams, uh, that was a special one. Their fifth of the season, chance to go pursue two more at SoFi against the Chargers, then at Seattle for Sean McVay. 
DeMarco Farr, JB Long. This has been the Coach McVay Show presented by Microsoft Surface.